If you look at any other energy converter, it basically works on a gradient. In other words, a thermal gradient. A change of temperature for your heat pump makes your heat pump work. Uh, a change of electrical voltage makes all the generators work. You can look at a change of atmospheric pressure. You can even look at gravity gradients, which hydroelectric power base is based on. Gravity gradient between the top of the falls and the bottom. All of a sudden, Niagara Falls functions. But magnetic gradients have been harnessed. They haven't even been used in that vein of converting magnetic gradient energy to usable power. So here's one website you can check out, parentofpower.com. There's a hyphen in between. And Mike Brady claims to have a self-running magnet motor. And of course, it's been promoted and um, advertised on many other websites. But what I did basically is I became intrigued enough to want to build a replica. My replica is not as big as this. You can see this actually rotating. There's little MPEG videos on this website too. And so you get sort of convinced that maybe it works. Well, when you build this thing, first of all, the magnets themselves are not really exactly um, aligned. They're, they're actually tilted slightly, about 15 degrees. And also, what that creates is an asymmetric magnetic profile. And I know this because I measured it. And the Gauss meter basically was at one millimeter uh, distance. So after all that information, I got a grant, small grant, to start building one. And these are the plans they sent off to the plastics manufacturer. And essentially, uh, last year, we basically put all this together using a great website, forcefield.com, for magnets. They sell neodymium magnets very inexpensively and uh, you can go into any project you want. So the magnetic field measurement of a single magnet allowed me to then profile, as you saw, the entire uh, positive work and negative work slopes. So I knew exactly what regions could be researched further. And this shows the alignment that's involved and how precisely you can measure things. And basically I said, well, if it's going to produce energy, you might as well put a little uh, motor here that can be driven as a generator in the center. And then mount three disks as he does, where essentially the rotor magnets are vertically aligned, and then the stator magnets are, uh, I'm sorry, the stator magnets are vertically aligned, the rotor magnets are staggered uh, just slightly so that you get a, uh, hopefully two of them working and one of them being dragged through that uh, positive work area. And essentially that's what the completed grading motor looks like. It's a scale model replica, uh, about three feet across, and it's aligned horizontally because I figured I don't want any weight on the um, uh, center shaft. Uh, but however, I can't really say that it sustained itself. Like our text is moving around the side a little bit. But what you essentially might look at is a little more advanced <laughs> concepts probably needed. If you deal with so many magnets, you really need to look at all the contributions that the magnets give. And especially uh, if the next round of funding came through, I would then start to do more analysis and actually uh, start to add mathematically the profiles you saw of each magnet. So I could theoretically then align those profiles and essentially predict how much negative work and how much positive work is being done by each magnet. So there is hope for this project, but it seems like it will take a lot more work. <coughs> now if we look at the principles behind it, I mentioned the magnetic gradient, and what I wanted to show you briefly is the Hartman patent, 4215330. This is reviewed in our Fulton Magnet Motors report, and what this patent does for me and for anyone else who reviews it with a critical eye is you all of a sudden get sort of a breakthrough in your mind saying, he's moving this with permanent magnets. <coughs> and essentially you're looking at a 10 degree incline, all bearing at the beginning, and essentially you're allowing, he's allowing, the ball bearing to fly off of the end. And he even shows you in the patent where he puts three of them in series to basically describe the fact that this continu continue to uh, move the ball bearing through a series of these ramps. And of course there's anecdotal in information about other such projects that have succeeded in doing the Forbidden Perpetual Motion Act, but the fact is the rationale behind it is very well known. The stern Gerlach experiment is known in physics for years and it depends on a magnetic gradient being present.
present, or else you can't separate the protons. What comes out of that is the force. And the force is basically due to the terms of magnetism per distance. The one I like a little bit better and is a lot more simple and, and also has great potential for improvement is the Popular Science June 79 issue, which announced the Japanese Kirateko invention. This is one we call the spiral motor. And the spiral motor has lots of advocates, including nowadays, even Tom Bearden includes a pic this picture in his latest paper. Uh, Magnetic Power Institute, a few others are researching this in, in earnest. The only problem with this invention is the old style electromagnet. Electromagnets are very energy uh, guzzling. And of course, in an invention like this, we want to be as efficient as possible. So the way to improve this is basically to use a concept called magnetostriction. And the nice thing about magnetostriction is that it allows you to turn a magnetic field on and off instantly. Magnetostrictive materials basically create a magnetic field when the material is restricted. And uh, the IEEE transaction of magnets, uh, magnetics announced an invention that combines a piezoelectric material and a magnetorestrictive material. And they essentially label it as MR-PZT in a vise. And the vise, of course, restricts the entire size of both those materials. Piezo expands when you put a little voltage on it, the magnetorestrictive compresses, and you turn on your magnetic field on and off instantly. It's about one quarter of the power needed for a similar size electromagnet. And to me, this is the most promising avenue of research that will eventually provide a, a very viable um, output. In other words, we can probably see the magnetic gradient doing more work than it takes to do the little switch at the end of the spiral. <coughs> 